I'm just starting a reproduction of an 18th century piece. It's a folding table or a card table in the style of Sheraton. So this is about 1800 this piece. And it has turned legs that are reeded. There are about tw there are 12 reeds in each of these legs. They're slender and the front legs are round up here at the top but have some flats that I'll show you in a minute to connect to the uh, the skirts or the aprons here. This is decorated quite a bit with uh, different veneers. There'll be some crotch, um, some kind of figured crotch kind of veneer in the center panels here. Uh, now I have already turned the legs that you can see here and I've actually shaped the reeds on this leg here. And the other three the, the reeds have not been shaped yet. And I'll show you how I go about doing that, but a little bit about the turning. This is the template that I use. This is on thick sheet of poster board. I print out full size from SketchUp and then I cut it down through the through the center line and then I can hold this up on the rest, on the steady rest, on the tool rest in the lathe and mark out different uh, dimensions and features this way. The back legs are, are square and they'll have uh, mortises in them for the rails and they'll stay square. But the front legs are partially rounded and then partially squared. You can see here that there are two flats and some shallow sockets here for the front and side rails. And the rest of this is, is round. Uh, this will be covered in uh, veneer and bandings as well, which will be a little bit of a challenge because of that shape. But the rails will come up against that flat surface with a tongue on the end that will help position and then there will be a corner block inside the carcass that will screw into the, the leg as well. I left this flat or uh, yeah square and and drilled out the sockets while it was square uh, before this had been sliced uh, here. Then later I, I cut out, while it was square at the full dimension, I cut out these flats on the bandsaw with a handsaw down here and then uh, went back to the lathe. I had a mark on the tooth for the headstock so I knew exactly where to locate, relocate the turning on the lathe and then I rounded this off as a final uh, part of that process. So uh, now I'm ready to work on the reeds for these remaining legs. Uh, this one I'm just starting and what I did to what I'm doing uh, on the lathe I marked out these lines here um, 12, 12 lines 30 degrees apart and I just used a pencil to, to mark those lines 
on the tool rest and then the the registering system on the lathe I could set um, and, and for each one of these uh, positions and make the mark then brought it over here and used a v-tool to cut a shallow groove where that pencil line was just like this uh, by hand and now I'm getting ready to get, provide the full shape of the of the reed and I, what I did is uh, using the the full size picture of the drawing in the book I used by Verna Solomonsky I drew over in SketchUp the shape of these these uh, reeds and then created a little scraper blade here and maybe you can see the shape on the bottom down here and that agrees with the shape on the that the author uh, suggested for this this reed so the way I use this scraper blade is to go into that groove that the V tool started and then just just go deeper with it until I'm satisfied that I've got it I'm deep enough that's about that's about all it takes by the way this is just a uh, broken off of a piece of a bandsaw blade so it's about a sixteenth inch steel and I just filed off the teeth and then uh, you can see where I've made other shapes for other pieces on these things here's a couple more of these scraper blades uh, used for almost every piece I do I have to shape some scraper blades so now I can shift over 30 degrees and go to the next groove uh, and just start the scraper here sometimes I have to reverse my direction because of the grain this is mahogany and it's pretty easy to work it takes a couple maybe three or four passes to get down to where I have a decent shape on those reeds that's that's about it I, I may also finally make some shapes like this to finish these off but I'll have to make different sizes because it's smaller down here and bigger in the fat area so I may eventually make a few more of those rounded shape scraper blades now the way I sharpen these I use needle files and other metal files to shape the shape this uh, and then I'll use little small diamond um, sharpening tool to sharpen that flat and then of course I also uh, work this on the stone to get the faces uh, flat and, and, and shiny as well and 
maybe after each leg I'll probably re-hone the tool. That's about, I think that's just about enough on that one. I have, at the ends here, at the terminations, I have to use some carving tools to finish it up a little bit. Otherwise, this scraper pretty much does all the work. Uh, the other thing that I'll probably do is, I don't know if I have them here on the bench, yeah. These little sander forms, got different shapes of these, and I can put a little sandpaper on there and, and work these a little bit. There's really no reason for me to build a, some kind of a accessory for the lathe to use a Dremel or some router tool to, to create these things. By the time I'll be done, before I can make an accessory tool like that for the lathe, I'm already done doing it this way. This just saves time as far as I'm concerned. Now those those lines may not actually be perfectly straight, but they're good enough. And every reed may not be exact sized, but uh, that isn't going to make a bit of difference in the final product. You won't see it. So you can see how fast this goes. I'll I'll be done just a few minutes of doing this. Oops. Oh, man. Okay, so that's that's the next step is getting all these reeds. Then I'm going to start making the aprons and connecting them to the joinery here on the legs.